The perfect steak has a nice brown crust, but the inside is soft and tender. To achieve this, we need to prepare the steak by salting it. It's important to salt the meat at least 45 minutes in advance. When the meat is salted, liquid is drawn out through a process called osmosis. This forms a brine that is salty and begins to break down the muscle within the meat. This brine is then reabsorbed back into the steak and it's broken down the steak but left the outside dry. This tenderizes the meat but leaves the outside of the steak dry. It's important to dry the steak to allow the Maillard reaction to occur. Water boils at a temperature of about 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but the Maillard reaction takes place over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have moisture on the outside of the steak, then the steak will just boil instead of get hot enough to crisp in through the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction happens at extremely high temperatures. It browns the meat and develops new flavor compounds. Through the Maillard reactions, amino acids right at the steak surface will uh, react with carbonyl groups to form thousands of new flavor compounds. So when a dry steak hits a searing hot fry pan, the Maillard reaction will happen right at the steak surface. Now we're ready to get started cooking. Check if your fry pan is hot enough, try dribbling a couple of drops of water on it. If the drops skid like this, the fry pan's ready. If the water droplets sit on the fry pan then evaporate like this, it's not quite hot enough. This weird sliding around of the water is due to the Leidenfrost effect. The Leidenfrost effect causes the water to slide around like this because when it hits a pan that's hot enough, a bit of vapor forms right in between the water droplet itself and the pan. This creates a bit of an insulative layer so the water droplet doesn't evaporate immediately. It also reduces the friction um, of the water droplet. So the water droplet slides around the pan in a weird uh, kind of dancing type of way. When the pan is ready, add a bit of oil. I recommend a vegetable oil because a vegetable oil has a higher smoke point than animal fat based oils. The hot oil will have a very low viscosity. And now it's time to add the meat. I continuously rotated the steak every 30 seconds to encourage a more even cook through the steak. When the steak is almost done, add butter and whatever spices you prefer. It's important to wait until the steak has about two minutes of cook time left or the interior temperature is at around 100 degrees to add the butter. Butter has a smoke point of about 350 degrees and will burn if it's added initially into the pan because the pan will reach hotter temperatures than 350 degrees. If you like your steak medium rare, remove when the internal temperature reaches about 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then allow your steak to rest. The final and most important step of this whole process is to sit down and enjoy your steak.